Hi, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Philippa and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Pathfinder tool in Adobe Illustrator CS6. To get the Pathfinder tool, go to Window and then choose Pathfinder. There is a keyboard shortcut, Shift Command F9. To be perfectly honest, I never use the keyboard shortcut because I have this tool palette open constantly. I'm always using the Pathfinder tool and I keep it docked with the Align palette and the Transform palette. I find keeping them down there together is really quite useful. Okay, so I'm going to show you the two ways I use the Pathfinder tool and then we're going to look at using it for something a little bit more exotic. First thing I'm going to do is delete that text box and explain the two different ways of using it. So there are lots of buttons on here and they're quite confusing and I can never remember what they all do. So I just use two. I use this one here on the top left which is the Unite and this one here on the bottom left which is Divide. So one of them joins stuff together and one of them divides things apart. Pretty easy to remember those and they're both on the left. To use the um, Unite tool, um, I'm just going to work with some simple shapes. I'm going to draw some shapes. Uh, you'll notice I'm just overlapping these shapes for now. doesn't really matter what they look like. Um, so to join these together, the most obvious way to do that would be to group them. You could use Command G or you could uh, right click and choose group. That will mean that in the future you can actually ungroup them if you want. However, if you want to make this more permanently into a single shape and remove all these overlaps, then you can use the Unite tool. So I just click that and you notice all the little overlaps have vanished. This is now one shape. Um, so that's how the Unite tool works. I'll just pop that shape over there and I'll show you how the Divide tool works. I'm going to draw one large shape there and deselect that, grab another colour and I'm going to draw some smaller shapes on top and I'm going to draw one shape that is running off the edge like that. So these green shapes are all completely on the pink shape and this orange shape is hanging off the edge there. So what I'm going to do is select all of them, just drag over with the um, selection tool, the black arrow tool, and click the divide button. Now it looks like nothing has happened. You will notice that a few of the little center spots in the middle have disappeared, um, but if I click off this and click on it again, it's all sort of still grouped together. It's because when you click um, any of these tools along the bottom here, it actually will group them together for you. It's cut them along the lines of the edge of the paths, so they will be cut, and along here will be cut, and along all the outsides here, but it has actually grouped them together, so I just need to ungroup them. I can do Command Shift G, or I can right click and choose ungroup, and then I can actually delete the pieces that I don't need. So you'll notice here where this piece went over the edge, it actually trimmed right along the um, outside line. So it can be a good way to trim things as well. Okay, now that we've had a look at our basic way of how the two tools work, the Unite and the Divide tools, let's use them for making some text. So I've got some I've made earlier over here. Something, this is just a a word typed in, um, I think it's Cooper Black is the typeface, and then I've used a photograph to grab some texture out of it, live traced it, and then used the divide tool to generate these shapes. So I'm going to show you how we do that. I'm just going to zoom out and select those and delete them. So I'm going to get my text tool. And I'm going to type my word. I'm just going to do one letter for now because that will be much quicker. This process isn't the quickest. I'm sure there's a faster way. I'm going to get my... Um, 
going to choose my typeface. Here we go, Cooper Black. The reason why I'm choosing this one is it because it's really nice and thick. Um, anything that's too thin, this technique really won't work because you won't be able to see very much of the texture. The next thing I need to do is get a um, image or a photograph that has texture in it. I have sourced this paint texture image from myang.com. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send this to the back. So I'm going to use Command Shift Left Bracket to send it to the back. And what I'll need to do is actually prepare this because at the moment it's a photograph and I will need to turn that into vectors before I can actually cut into it with my letter T. So to do that I'm going to do an image trace going to warn me about this because it's a large image. I'm going to say, yep, go do it. In older versions of Illustrator, this will be called uh, Live Trace. They've just changed the name of it to Image Trace in CS6. So that's not a bad trace. Um, if you want to change it, you can click up here on the Trace panel. It just gives you the options. So you can alter that if you like. You will only be needing um, black and white for this though. I'm going to leave it as standard and once you're happy with the trace you can click the expand button and you'll get all of the different paths come out of that. So if I zoom in quite a bit we can see that each of these parts is a path. That's what we want. It's still grouped together though. Now to use this to cut with we need to convert the text into outlines so I'm going to right click on there and choose create outlines. If you can't remember that it is also available under the type menu under here, create outlines there. So I've got my text, just going to make that a bit bigger, scale it up a bit and find a nice place to put it. So um, I'm just looking here, this is quite um, sort of similar, the pattern down here and up here it gets a little bit more black in it. So depending on the effect I wanted, um, I could get either quite a similar pattern or get a little bit more interest by maybe moving the T up into the darker area up there. So the one thing to remember when you're doing using the divide tool is that once you cut it, all the little pieces that will be cut will take the, um, the colour and the effects of the object on top. So at the moment that's just plain black. Now that's okay it's not a complete disaster but it will make it a lot harder for us because I really want to retain this black and white effect so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send this to the back command shift left bracket to send it all the way to the back and we can see it's still under there the next thing we're going to need to do is ungroup this so I select this and then right click ungroup or command shift G and then the next thing I'm going to do is select all of that and the T underneath. I can just make out the T there, I think, <laughs> and divide. You can see the button staying pressed down, it might take a minute. It will be grouped together again because I clicked on divide, so once again I'm going to ungroup that. So when I click off it, it's very hard to see where that is. If you hit Command A, you will select everything on your page, and I can just make out the top of the T there coming round the serif and down the stem. There's the other side of the stem and the other serif. So what I'm going to start doing is deleting everything that is not the T itself. I'm just going to do that by starting to click and drag with the black arrow tool and delete. And you can see these. This gets rid of quite a lot but it has become instantly very hard to see what is um, white pieces and what is black pieces because there might be white bits out here like that. You can't tell if you've got rid of them all. So the next thing I like to do is grab the rectangle tool, get a colour, doesn't matter what colour it is, and just draw a rectangle 
whoops, need a blue, something bright. And I'm just going to use Command Shift left bracket to send that all the way to the back. The next thing I want to do is to lock that coloured panel. So I'm going to use Command 2. You can also go into your Layers panel and um, lock it in here. But as you can see, it's, it's a long way down. So with that back blue panel locked, I can use the arrow tool to continue deleting the parts I don't need. So I'm taking quite large slices off. You don't want to go too close to the letter form itself though. It will make it um, more likely that you'd actually cut into the letter. And it does take a while to get around these bits. So if you happen to be preparing your letters like this for uh, a typeface design you're making and you want to actually turn it into a font, um, perhaps you're using FontLab or Glyphs or Fontographer, you know, software like that, you will not need the white, you'd only need the black. Um, so I've got a decision to make here. I could actually decide to delete all of the white in here or all of the black. Um, that's why I use black and white. I can then just actually go and grab the uh, magic wand tool and click on anywhere where there's white. That will select all the white in the entire document. So if you've got white elsewhere in the document, this will delete that as well. And just hit delete. And there we go, we've done a lot of the work with the magic wand. You must remember that you won't actually need the white because once you print this on a put this um, letter on a white background, um, you'll have it white anyway. So what I've done there is I've just done a marquee across the top, and then I'm shift clicking to deselect the pieces I don't want to delete. going quite close to the edge. So once you've been all the way around your letter and you're satisfied that you've deleted all the excess, you've just got one colour and you've got the texture sitting there nicely, you can group it. Actually when I do that I see some extra bits have appeared over here. So I'll get rid of those. And there's some extra down here as well. Oh, more over there. You're probably wondering why I'm going to such a lot of trouble to get this letter right. But if you're going to be spending hours and hours on a typeface design, you want the underlying shapes to be pretty good to start with. 
So there you go, that's just a quick introduction into using the Pathfinder tool. What I've done today is shown you how to use the Unite tool, how to use the Divide tool, and how to take a photographic texture, use the Live Trace tool or Image Trace tool, and create a black and white texture, which you can then use the Divide tool to create interesting textures for your typography. See you next time. Bye.